name is Deanne Hanlon. I'm Liz Jones. And together we are Fully, Fully Devoted. Devoted. Um, today we're starting a new video series. And um, a couple of weeks ago, we had it laid on our hearts that we're supposed to be covering some hard topics here in the next, uh, in the next really several weeks. Mm -hmm. um, We've kind of laid out a little bit because we were working on um, how to go about this and what to do. And um, they're based on what it means to be a Christian in today's world. And we've got a series of questions that we're going to be addressing throughout the next few weeks that um, talk about what it is to be a Christian and some of the things that you might have thought or, or might have um, considered as you were um, thinking about maybe what it means to be a Christian. Uh, Today is just the first in this series, and we were trying to figure out where we should start, and um, the only logical, really, place to start is with the gospel. Uh, we prayed about it, um, met with my pastor, trying to figure out what we should, should do first, and um, it's the foundational cornerstone of what it means to be a Christian. Um, and it's what sets Christianity apart from all other faith systems. So we're going to be starting with the gospel. What is the gospel? So why do you believe what you believe? And can you share it? That's the question that we um, hope and pray that you keep in mind as you watch this video. When we talk about the gospel, we're actually talking about the plan of salvation. Um, and we're going to walk through the Romans road because, frankly, it's one of the easiest ways to present the gospel, to communicate that. Um, and our ask of you is that you take the time to truly listen, to write down these scripture addresses, and to research them yourself, to familiarize yourself with the story of the gospel so that when you are presented in a situation where you hear the Holy Spirit telling you to share it, that you share with confidence and boldness that it is a firmly rooted belief. So we're going to start on the Romans road with Romans 3.23. And it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So let's just take a little bit closer look at the very beginning of that. It says, For all. So in this instance, what does all mean? Well, all means you, me, Liz, and really any human being on the planet. Even if you've lived a morally good life, if you've ever told a white lie, mm -hmm. ever omitted a truth, um, ever covered up the truth, um, if you were quick to, if you've ever been quick to anger or been selfish, or even ever lusted after someone, then you've committed a sin. Um, you can also use love as your compass or as your yardstick for measuring. If you've ever been unloving to someone or done something unloving to someone, then you've sinned. Sin not only alienates us from God, but it also alienates us from seeing his glory or his goodness or greatness. So the second scripture in the Romans Road to Salvation is Romans 6.23. And it teaches us about the consequences of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The punishment that we have all earned for our sins is death. Not just physical death, but eternal death. And the third verse in the Romans Road to Salvation picks up where Romans 6.23 left off. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us. Jesus' death paid the price for our sins. Jesus' resurrection proves that God accepted Jesus' death as the payment for our sins. Because of Jesus' death on our behalf, all we have to do is believe in him, trusting his death as the payment for our sins, and we'll be saved. We also need to profess our belief in that. So the next verse on the Romans road is Romans 10, 8. 
that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says it again, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins and rescue us from eternal death. Salvation, the forgiveness of sins, is available to anyone who will trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The final aspect of the Romans road to salvation is the result of salvation. Romans 5.1 has this wonderful message. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, we have a relationship of peace with God. Romans 8 1 teaches us, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because of Jesus' death on our behalf, we will never be condemned for our sins. Hallelujah for that, sister. Yeah. Um, finally, we have this precious promise of God from Romans 8 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So would you like to follow the Romans road to salvation? If so, here's a simple prayer that you can pray to God. Saying this prayer is a way for you to declare to God that you're relying on Jesus Christ for your salvation. The words themselves will not save you. Only faith in Jesus can provide salvation. So the prayer is, God, I know that I have sinned against you and I am deserving of punishment. But Jesus Christ took the punishment that I deserve so that through faith in him, I could be forgiven with your help. I place my trust in you for salvation. Thank you for your wonderful grace and forgiveness and the gift of eternal life. Amen. I remember the first time that I um, prayed with someone to receive salvation. I was terrified. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I say, repeat after me and miss something that's important, that's a key to salvation? Um, what if I mess this whole thing up and this is what the Lord spoke to my heart and something that I really want you as a believer to hear. You cannot mess up the prayer of salvation that you are praying with someone else or even for yourself. The prayer itself, the words matter, but what matters most is your heart and the heart of the person that you are leading. If the Holy Spirit has already gone before you and softened that heart of stone and plowed up the field for the seeds to be planted, there is no way that you or I could mess up leading someone to Jesus because that would mean that their salvation is dependent on me or dependent on the words that we say. And it is a heart thing. Salvation is a yielding, a surrendering, a giving of our hearts to the Lord. And it's literally just saying, God, I can't do this on my own anymore. I can't live this life by myself. I need you. That simple declaration and prayer is enough. Um, I think the other piece to this is telling someone. Mm -hmm. um, we've already talked about professing your um, salvation. It's so important to do that. And so Deanna and I are asking you as our viewer, if you prayed this prayer or you are not sure if you're saved and you are questioning or wondering like, 
Is this real? Did I really do it? Today is the day to yield yourself to the Lord, to submit to him, to pray. We don't like the word submit at all, but it's yielding. It's giving yourself over, saying, God, I can't do it. And the truth is none of us can do it on our own without him, period. And so if you prayed this prayer, we are asking you to contact us and let us know. It's important that you share what you have just done. Why is that? I believe it's because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. You declaring with your own mouth or typing on the computer with your own hands, I just received Jesus Christ as my Savior. It makes an impact. It does something in your heart, kind of solidifies what you have already done or what you've already prayed. And so contact us, let us know. We would like to walk alongside you in your journey of faith. What I can tell you is you cannot do this on your own. No man is an island and God created us for relationship, for fellowship, for community. Deanne and I need each other. We need so many people in our lives to come alongside us and to mentor, to nurture, to water the seeds that God has planted. You need that as well. So do not think just because you prayed this prayer that you can do it by yourself because God never intended for you to be alone. Um, so reach out to us, contact us, let us know that you prayed this prayer, and then also send us your email address, which if you email us, we'll have it, but um, your mailing address, we'll mail you some information, um, and we would love to walk alongside, to journey with you, and to pray with you through the days ahead. Once you receive salvation, your life doesn't immediately change. So if you prayed this prayer, and you drive a beat up old pickup, you're guess still gonna what? Have it. <laughs> You're still gonna have your beat up old pickup when you finish praying this prayer. Life doesn't all of a sudden get perfect. And that's where we need each other. That's where we need community and that's where we need discipleships. So we encourage you to contact us and let us know. And you can contact us by either emailing us at fullydevotedld at gmail.com or you can message us here on Facebook, um, and it's at Fully Devoted Ministry. Or you can uh, message us through our website, which is fullydevoted.net. Um, we really, really would love to hear from you if this is something that's impacted your life. Mm -hmm. um, or if you've um, prayed that prayer of salvation because that professing or that declaration is so important to you. Um, also, allowing us to walk alongside you and be your community. We would love to do that. So um, next time we'll be covering another topic in this series about what it means to be a Christian in today's world. And um, until then, we hope to hear from you.